Well, first it's Coco's bells, and now I got birds? Seriously? Good morning. Today's topic relates to, yes, another sphere. But before I get into that, I just want to give a shout out to Mike and Carl and Captain Eddie and Alan and other people who inspire us all and do a great job on YouTube and share their knowledge and information. I was very lucky to meet uh, Captain Eddie last summer in Phoenix and that was kind of a, a really neat experience for me. Anyway, today's topic is going to relate to making spheres. Okay, there's a little smaller one. This is a big one out of teak. And specifically, I'm going to deal with a jam chuck for a sphere. So stay tuned. Okay, this is a sphere and a jam chuck that I was working on a while ago, trying to work through this process. So this is going to be the end result. A jam chuck and a ball or a sphere that's going to go in there and stay in there while you turn it and sand it. Now somebody else who's been a great influence of mine over the years, starting in the early 1990s, was Richard Raffin. I'm holding a DVD of his that's uh, relatively recent. It's on Turning Toys, which is a really, really good DVD. One of the projects he did involved turning a sphere, and he used a jam chuck. So I'm going to use that design, and uh, Richard, you know, he needs to get all the credit for where I got that information anyway. So uh, I've got a couple little things I'm going to tweak on that, and uh, let's get going. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, as much as I hate to resort to math, because I'm really bad at math, this is some basic geometry, I guess. And I got this off the internet. Somebody was uh, turning a sphere. Now, what I'm going to use from this particular drawing, and this really relates to Richard Raffin's sphere that he turned in the jam chuck, the dimensions on here. We have an octagon, eight-sided figure. So we have an angle right in here, which is 135 degrees, and also the length of each one of these uh, lines going through there. Now, eventually, I'm going to connect those straight lines into a sphere and I've drawn a circle touching the outside of each one of those lines. Now I have a center point established and I've drawn a circle inside of the octagon and that will help visualize the final sphere that we're after. And there's a sneak peek of the sphere itself that we're going to turn in this video. Now the very first thing I need to do is establish a center line for my sphere. So on this set of calipers, I've got the diameter marked on them. I've got that set. And I've got this trued up on the end, and I'm not going to bring up my tailstock. I think that'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my calipers right here. So I'm going to use a mechanical pencil, which is going to give me a little bit finer pencil mark. I'm going to just mark this right here. And I'm going to take this line, draw it all the way around my blank of wood. So there's the diameter of my sphere in this direction and in this direction. Now the next thing I'm going to do is establish a center point. Now this is something I did a little bit different than in Richard Raffin's DVD. He drew his center line first and then sort of eyeballed that from side to side. I'm going to take a compass and I'm going to just estimate where that center line is going to be. Right about there. And I'm going to hold a point to the left on that line and to my right on the end of my sphere here. So I'm going to just draw that in. Now as you can see, 
I'm not exactly in the very center. And that's okay. From here I can make a mark uh, delineating the very center of my sphere. And that line is the most important thing. You need to keep that established. Don't turn it away or sand it away until the very end. So I'm going to mark that with my mechanical pencil. So I've drawn that in a little bit darker, so there is my sphere divided into two segments. Now I've got this surface divided up into four equal segments. These are very important. I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on the very end of this. Okay, now with my compass set to the same dimension I used up here, I'm going to mark the same segment right here on the end of my future sphere. So very carefully mark that on there. I'm going to darken that a little bit. Now keep in mind I'm pretty much following Richard Raffin and the process he used for making his sphere. So what I need to do is connect this line and this line and make a very straight chamfer. So I'm going to do a little turning here with my spindle gouge. Now you can safely start this cut with your tool on its side or the flute closed and increasingly make deeper and deeper cuts starting at the outside ridge and eventually end up with a straight line or a chamfer connecting one line to the other line. Now before making this video I probably turned five or six balls and a corresponding jam chuck for each one of them. Now on my calipers I have the diameter of that ball set. So it's the same here and it's the same here. Now as I turn this angle down and the angle on the other side down I should be able to get the same dimension right here. And I was having trouble with that before. And here is the problem. It's this angle right here, which is 135 degrees. So I've got that set on an angle gauge. The trouble is the legs are too long. So I've made a little, a little jig for that. So I, I should have 135 degrees here and also coming down there. And I'm a little bit off on that. I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to line that up right there. So right in this area here, I need to cut that down just a little bit more. So I'm going to check that. That looks a little bit better to me. All right, now I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to establish the same chamfer on this side. Now in this clip I've established a little bit of room to work and I'm making my chamfer on the opposite end of the sphere. Now I'm going to check my angles and dimensions on this measurements going across. That angle there is right on. This angle 135 degrees is right on. That checks in that dimension there. Now, what I eventually want to do is have this point, this point, this point here, and this one all contact my jam chuck. Now, whatever I'm doing, this dimension right here and this one match perfectly as do this one here and this one. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my jam chuck and we'll go on from there. Now here's a very good view of the eight-sided figure, the octagon that I've established and this will be very important in utilizing the jam chuck that I'll make later in the video. Now I'm just taking my parting tool and uh, 
parting this off at the final dimension onto the jam chuck. Now here's my spear blank and what I need is an opening, a concave recess that's going to match that point and that point and that point and I've got that set on my calipers so I'm going to just uh, turn my lathe on and mark that see how close I get okay right there I'm going to define that with my parting tool I'll take a spindle gouge and I'll hog that out of the center. Now this is a bit of back hollowing popularized by Richard Raffin and I'm making this look pretty easy but this is a really nice soft green piece of wood and as you go through this you're going to see that I'm going to copy this footage three times. Here's another shot of that. You're really rubbing the bevel on the top part of the opening in that. Well, and it's not quite so easy in Cocobolo or Lignovite, but uh, anyway, let's move on. So now I've got a scraper. I'm going to refine the opening. And I better check. That's actually fitting fairly well, except I need to go in deeper. Okay, I think that will work. Now, when I first started, I drew a line right across the center of this one end. So I'm going to use that to line myself up so I'm square across like that that looks pretty good now one thing I did not do is bring up my tailstock and align my center point with a line on my sphere that's another good way to line that up and make sure it's uh, in the right orientation. All right, now I'm going to do one more thing. Make sure I'm lined up, and this is something Richard Raffin did. Just take a pencil. And I'm trying to get that even on either side, and it's not. So I'm going to adjust that with my mallet here. And that looks pretty good. I've got the camera repositioned so I'm going to come in in this orientation. Now you can see I still have a flat spot right there. I need to take that off. Now at least for me a push cut seems to be a little bit too aggressive. I keep making this ball bounce across the floor. So I'm just uh, scraping that with the tip of my tool very gently. Now I've got my camera repositioned once more. And from here down I need to take a lot off right there. Right here I've gone past my line. The rest of this is just there. Just a little bit more scraping and I'll have it. And I need to work on this area down here. And I'll probably take off some of this jam chuck so I can reach farther in there. Now I continue to take a little bit more wood off with my scraping maneuver. And it's really best to scrape toward the headstock. And then you won't pull the sphere out of the chuck. Okay, I can probably sand to that point right there. I have a little ridge right here on the top of that I need to deal with right there. 
Now you may be able to hear in some segments that as I scrape the surface of this, you can hear the unevenness of the surface. And it's a matter of stopping the lathe and just checking it until you get down to that line. And right there, that's important I leave a little bit of that line so I can see it when I reverse that. Now I'm going to take just a little bit off this jam chuck and I think I'll use my parting tool. Now I don't want to take too much of that off and have that ball come out of there because I'll have a heck of a time truing it up again. I'm happy with that. A little bit more right there. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding right here while I have it in this orientation. Okay, I'll give you a couple different uh, views of that. Here's my pencil line. And the idea is not to have any bit of a flat right there. It looks pretty good. Now it's important, something I've learned, is coming on this part, this hemisphere, you need to go past the center. You don't want to have a little ridge in there at the very end. So I'm going to take that out, reverse it 190 degrees. Okay, it's 180 degrees. I apparently missed that day in school. I put a pencil line going the other direction. I'm not sure if that'll help me. It might help line that up. This is where I have trouble. Now be careful, I've done this before, is I knocked that jam chuck out of position. I made that center a lot smaller, so I need to take some of this rim off so the concave area touches my sphere. Now I've done quite a bit of fine tuning on this jam chuck off camera. One thing I'm doing, the very center of that down there, I'm trying to make that deeper and not contact my blank. I just don't think that's really holding it in. I think it's more this third up here at the very top. Now I, I drew a line right here as that was rotating in the other position. So I've, I've changed it 180 degrees and I'm sighting down that line. I also have this center line that I need to keep in mind. And the other thing that will help you position this is this flat right here needs to be perpendicular to your bedways. That all looks pretty good there. Still in pretty good shape. And again, you can take your pencil. mark a circle on the very end and and I don't know if you can see it you have to trust me that is just dead on so I'm gonna just do a little spindle scraping work back to the area I've already completed now for success in this scraping operation is number one use the very tip of your tool and here's a good shot of me doing that and the other thing is a relatively high lathe speed. I'm probably turning about 1800 RPM, but you have to be very gentle around this and uh, just gradually work your way down to that line. Okay, let's take a look at our progress. Flat right there, getting down to the center line. Now I've taken away my line right there, so I don't want to hit that again. But here on, I got just a little bit of a flat area. So I'll go from side to side. Can still feel it a little bit out of balance. 
not much. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, I'm right there. I've got a line, no line, a little bit. Feels good. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding here. And then I'm gonna start sanding the entire piece. And the most important thing is I don't have a ridge right there in the center. I'll turn it 90 degrees. And I'm gonna back the camera off. Now I got some 120 grit sandpaper. Now before I go to any finer grit, I'm gonna take that out and sand the entire thing with this sandpaper. There we go. It feels pretty good. I got a little ridge in the center there. So 90 degrees, and all I'm gonna do is do some sanding. Now using the jam chuck makes sanding a breeze, but I will save you from the majority of it. It's very easy to take it out and put it back in and eventually just work those lines away and you'll end up with a sphere. I got that ridge on the other hemisphere right here, a little bit of a ridge. Now I'll do some of this sanding off camera because uh, you've seen people sand before. In my other um, sphere video, I use these little blocks. I've got a bunch of these and I've cut them on my bandsaw to an exact radius. And they just vary, so I try to make a sphere to match that. This one is too large. But if you get that really close, you can actually sand that. Now I need to mention that I do have the inside radius of that little block lined with sandpaper. And part of it is just telling you if it's round or not. It'll show up the high, high spots and it'll leave the low spots. You can put a pencil line on there while that's rotating. And that's a really pretty good tool for doing a sphere. So let me shut the camera off and I'll go down to about 220 grit on this. Now I've got my sphere sanded to about 220 grit. I've got a little bit of a pencil line here and there, which is okay. It's like leaving your layout marks on that hand-cut dovetail drawer. Well, let me show you one more trick. At the very end, you start sanding this away, and get smaller and smaller, it won't fit into your jam chuck very well. Take a little bit of water, spritz in there, and that'll help hold that in there. What is the purpose of making something round, potentially perfect in shape? Well, for me, it's not making a perfect shape. It's making a jam chuck that'll hold that in there. And that's pretty cool. I could probably make a ball equally as round and perfect between centers. But, well, try it. Let me know what you think. That's a lot of fun. And that's, that's not a bad sphere. Thank you very much.